my fellow patriots, with you, with you, why don't you just stay right now? Seventh inning stretch. Oh, my goodness, yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's good. And have a seat. Good to see you. Good to be with you. Uh, I am excited about being here with like minded men and women who are concerned about our nation. And many of us are sitting here in this auditorium as a result of a sense of urgency. We recognize that there's an authentic threat that is facing our nation, and that threat is coming from our government. It's coming from our government. Many of us who uh, were uh, activated uh, and got involved in the Tea Party movement uh, are now beginning to wonder if, in fact, we're really making a difference. Is the Tea Party making a difference? We, yes. we elected a number of them to go represent us in 2010, and there they are in Washington, D.C., and yet and still we are seeing the kind of unconstitutional acts being perpetrated against us in spite of the fact that we have men and women who are there who represent our interests. What happens to our men and women when they leave out of their localities and go to Washington, D.C., and start sipping on Potomac water? <laughs> Something happens. And, and they are, are not acting in a way that I think represents our interests. And uh, much of what I am concerned about are those things that are unconstitutional. And there are many, there are plethora of, of actions and activities that have happened in Washington, D.C. that is against the Constitution. In fact, one lawyer said to me this way, he says, the Constitution in America is dying a death of a thousand cuts. And the cuts are happening from within. It's happening by all three branches of the government. All three branches are involved in unconstitutional acts. Certainly we know about the executive orders, and many of us are horrified at what's happening with the many executive orders that are coming down from this president and this administration. It's just, uh, I think it's almost like 900 of them that he has passed or signed into law. And, and many of them are unconstitutional. I, I'll bring one of them that, you, that you're fully aware of. It's called the recess appointment, where he appointed someone to a cabinet position that was the responsibility of the Senate to do so. And he called it a recess appointment and there was no recess. And I waited for the leadership, our leadership, in the Republican Senate, to step forward and challenge the executive branch and say what you've done here is unconstitutional and we will challenge it in court. But what we got was silence. And, and I waited, I said, well, what's going on here? The next executive order that he signed was the Dream Act. Boy, this really pushed me over the edge. I said, I I'm going to wait and see if old Boehner would stand up and say this is unconstitutional. And I waited for three days, and I heard absolutely nothing come from our elected officials to protect our interests against an unconstitutional act. Same thing happened with NDAA the National Defense Authorization Act, which violates the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th amendments to the Constitution. Habeas Corpus, out the window. A right to a speedy trial, out the window. And nothing was said in the Senate nor in the House. And these acts are unconstitutional. I said, that's it. That's it. Some, something's got to be done. And so I went back and I revisited the, the Constitution, trying to find a way to deal with unconstitutional acts. And I came across the First Amendment. There are five planks within the First Amendment. Many of you know what they are, but the fifth one is where my eye fell. And the fifth plank of the First Amendment is this. The people have a right to peaceably assemble and petition redress. What is redress? Redress is a remedy for a wrong or an ill perpetrated against we the people. And I begin to look at that and begin to recognize that that has not happened within my lifetime where we the people have petitioned our government for an ill or a wrong that has been perpetrated against us. 
Not in the 20th century and certainly not in this century today. And we are witnessing a just act after act after act and activity of unconstitutional acts. And nothing is being done. Men and women, there's something that can be done. And it must be done by we, the people. Many of you are aware of the fact that when Benjamin Franklin came out of the Constitutional Convention, he was confronted by a woman and she asked, Sir, what have you given to us? And he says, a constitutional republic if you can keep it. The emphasis of what Benjamin said is in the verb to keep. To keep is an action verb. He put the action or the responsibility on you and I. We have the responsibility, the stewardship responsibility, to protect these God-given rights that are ours, that have been handed down by God and not by man. And if we don't defend our rights from unconstitutional acts, then we deserve to get tyranny of the worst kind. In many women, we're facing tyranny of the worst kind. Of the worst kind. And so I said, there's something that must be done. I looked at that particular uh, First Amendment, and I said, we can do something. And then I noticed in the Ninth and Tenth Amendment that nullification is also an option for us. That the government was created by the states, and the government, the, the Constitution was designed to limit government, not the people, nor the states. It is a creation of the states. And we have authority over the government. We tell it what to do. It doesn't tell us what to do. And we need to re-engage that principle, re-engage that concept, and make it active and alive today. So let me, before I tell you what we're doing in Constitutional Defenders of Texas, and by the way, there are five states that have contacted me and asked me, can they do the same? And their, and their five states, I said, certainly, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just take our template, our boilerplate, and do it in your state. And what you're doing is a, a, a constitutional act that will get the attention of our representatives. All of them on both sides of the aisle, by the way. These unconstitutional acts are not going unnoticed by those we elected, by Republicans. Why aren't they defending our rights? Why aren't they stepping onto the floor in the House and declaring these are unconstitutional and we will, be, we will pay it to court and we will not have this in America today? They're not doing it. Part of the reason why they're not doing it is because of us. We've got to be honest with ourselves, men and women. We've got to tell the truth that we have been derelict in our stewardship responsibility to protect these liberties. In order for us to correct what is wrong in America, we've got to turn the microscope around and look at ourselves and say that we have failed to do what is required in order to maintain this liberty that has been given to us by God. God has given to us these liberties. And how dare us sit at home and only concern about our own material wealth and our own well-being as opposed to that which could potentially impact our posterity, our children. So I want to frame for you what, what I believe is driving me today, and it ought to drive you as well. There's a book that was written by Matthew Spaulding, and it was called, and it's called uh, We Still Hold These Truths. Excellent book. I recommend it to anyone today. We Still Hold These Truths. In it, in his introduction, he says this, and I think it is a, a template. It is the impetus behind why we do what we do as Americans. Listen to what he says. He says, our revolution was about the idea upon which a new nation was to be established. Permanent truths applicable to all men and all times. As Abraham Lincoln later said, proclaimed that principles rather than will would be the ultimate grounds of government. This flies in the face of human secularism and the secularism that is dominating our government today. They believe that this constitution is a living constitution, a constitution that is malleable. 
that can be applied differently in different ages and in different dispensations. Men and women, they are wrong. These are permanent truths, immovable truths, the same the yesterday, the day, and forever. All men are created equal. How dare they say that that's malleable and changeable? They have. And we have been silenced in the face of their madness, in the face of the morass of human secularism designed to dethrone God and to destroy our system. And so men and women, we are, are, are engaged in a necessary exercise, a necessary movement on the part of the people, we are facing the same kind of threat that was facing our founding fathers at the beginning of this nation. What they were facing, men and women, was tyranny. King George's tyranny, and I submit to you tonight that we're facing the same kind of tyranny. Amen. Mark Levin says that soft tyranny always turns into hard tyranny. And he's right. We are facing soft tyranny. They're moving incrementally, but ever so rapidly towards flipping this nation. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, we are on the verge of fundamentally changing America. Men and women, he is right. And the window to stop him is very small. It's between now and November. And if we don't rally, to stop this madness, this nation will be forever changed. We are one crisis away from him declaring martial law. And when he declares martial law, listen to me and listen to me here, here, he will suspend the Constitution. And it will never come back. Do you hear me? He yeah. said, Pastor Brooks is hyperbolized, and I am not. I'm telling you what the executive orders are all designed and set up to do is to rob us of our liberties. So you and I need to re-engage these principles, these founding principles. What are the founding principles? These founding principles, men and women, that make this nation great are undergirded by the idea or the concept of a Judeo-Christian ethic. Listen to me. American exceptionalism is directly tied into those principles, and those principles are undergirded by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. And I say that deliberately. I say that wherever I go, because I want to make it clear to all the other ones who are out there with, at, at, with Mohammed and Buddha and all them, yeah. that the founding of this country was not on Mohammed and Buddha. of American exceptionalism, you're talking about the principles that are founded within the Word of God. Amen. Yes. When you talk about American exceptionalism, you cannot talk about it apart from those principles, the Judeo-Christian frame. To do so is to do violence to our history. We are a godless people, a, a God-fearing people. There are godless people who are attempting to rob us of that legacy, of that history, and we must resist them at every stand. What are those principles? Liberty, equality, natural rights, consent of the government, religious freedom, private property, the rule of law, conservatism, self-government, and independence, all of these are principles founded upon the Judeo-Christian frame. Matthew Spalding goes on to say this. He says, our nation's founders knew that the perpetuation of liberty would always depend on spirited citizens. On spirited citizens. And patriotic statesmen actively engaged in the democratic task of governing themselves holding to the truth of 1776. Men and women, we've lost that spirit in America. And we have capitulated to the government. And many of us in this room are guilty of capitulation. 
we have allowed them to interpret our Constitution against us. And I submit to you, no more. No more. We cannot allow it any further. Starting today, right now, we must stop depending upon them and take on the duty and the responsibility of defending our rights. I'm going to cover just two more ideas and then I'm going to say. Notification is a word that sometimes scares our Republican friends. I'm a Republican. And you go to Republican meetings and you say, nullify. Oh, you're really too serious. Now we don't want to know. <laughs> yes, we do. If in fact our government will not adhere to and listen to the and consent to the will of the government. The notification is an action that we can take. But let me define it, why it is important for us. And this is by Thomas Wood from his book called Notification. Thomas Wood says this, the central point behind notification is that the federal government cannot be permitted to hold a monopoly on constitutional interpretation. Hello? Hello? <laughs> you cannot allow them to be the the arbiter of what is right and what is wrong or what the Constitution is saying. Amen. We cannot allow that. We can't, we must not allow that. That's what got us in trouble today. He goes on to say this. They cannot be held a monopoly on constitutional interpretation. If the federal government has an exclusive right to judge the extent of its power, warned James Madison and Thomas Jefferson in 1798. It will continue to grow regardless of elections, the separation of powers, and other much common limited government powers, unquote. He says no matter what we do, if we allow them to make the interpretation, to make the final assessment as to what is a constitution and what is not, it will continue to grow no matter how much we screen limited government, no matter how we say this is not what we want the government to do, it will continue to grow. How many of you know that that's exactly and precisely what has been happening for the last 30 years? Yeah. It has been growing and we've been saying, wait a minute, limited government, limited government. Our, our representatives and our, our elected officials and our, our, our people who are running for office come before us and they say the same thing, limited government, limited government. Then they go to Washington, they go to Austin, and nothing changes. Yeah. Right. Now we've got to be honest with you. Nothing has changed. And it won't change until you and I take serious our stewardship responsibility to demand redress. He goes on to say this. A constitution, after all, is only a piece of paper. It cannot enforce itself. Hello? Checks and balance among the executive, legislative, and judi judiciary branch. A prominent feature of the Constitution provides little guarantee of limited government. Since these federal branches can simply unite against the independence of the states and the reserved rights of the people. How many of you know that that's what happened when Judge Roberts ruled that Obamacare was constitutional after he redefined it and legislated as a tax. How many of you know he went beyond his enumerated duties of the Constitution? All right. And I'm, I'm getting off the couch now. I'm off the couch. We've got to stop this man. And many of us who were in the Tea Party re-engaged and we started seeing the numbers go back up again at our meetings. Because they said, how, how could Roberts do that? How could he do that? He sided with the executive branch against you and me. That's what he did. I want you to know that there's something we can do. That's why I started Constitutional Defenders of Texas. Alexander Hamilton said this. He contended in February of 78 that there is no position, quote, which depend on a clearer principle than that every act 
of delegated authority contrary to the tenor of the commission under which it is exercised is void. And let me explain what he was saying. The commission he was talking about here is the Constitution of the United States. He says, any authority that is contrary to the tone and the tenor of the Constitution is automatically, before it leaves Washington, D.C., finds its way all the way here in the state of Texas, before it even gets here, it is null and void. Why? Because it's unconstitutional. I will not comply. Now let me tell you something. That until we start recognizing that we do not have to comply with anything that comes out of Washington that is unconstitutional, we will be their slaves. That's right. Take it from me. You don't want to be a slave. <laughs> Are you listening to me? This is our moment. This is our moment. And as our founding fathers responded with their lives, their fortune, and their sacred honor, men and women, we can do no less than to respond in the same way to rescue this republic from the tyranny that faces it in the next two months. We can do no less. This is not time for us to sit down and wait for our elected officials to do a thing. They have done a thing. And the truth be told, every last one of them, even the ones that we love so much, said nothing when all these unconstitutional acts came down the pipeline. They said nothing. Could it be that they don't understand the Constitution? They swore to it. They swore to uphold it. And to defend it from domestic and foreign enemies. So we started the Constitutional Defense. And we gathered together at my church. And I said, we need to first of all gather all of the unconstitutional acts of this administration, this House of Congress, and this Supreme Court. And let's create a list. And before we do it, in two days, we had a list of over 50 unconstitutional acts. 50. And we could have gone more than that. I said, stop, time out, stop. That's enough. We took those 50 violations and we went to a professor of constitutional law and a lawyer, laid it on his desk and said, sir, are our observations right that these are unconstitutional acts? He took two days and looked at it. He got back to me and said, Pastor Bro, every last one that you listen here is unconstitutional. Every last one. Some of them are law today. NDA is law. I said, okay, now that we got these 50, we're going to list them in terms of the more egregious and make them front. And we put our list together. We drafted a letter of petition. And we sent out our letters. And we're going to send out those letters to every elected congressional person in the state of Texas. That's in Washington, D.C. Demanding redress of these unconstitutional acts. In other words, we want you, sir, Louis Bowman, Ralph Hall, Pete Sessions, to take up our interest and to nullify these unconstitutional acts. Now, I'm certain. I've already got a letter back from Senator Cornyn saying, I, you know, I believe in the Constitution, and I know that what we're doing here is constitutional, and the law is going on, and I've already got it the constitutional lawyers to tell him and me that these things are unconstitutional. He's already capitulated to doing the two-step and slide to the rep and slide and doing all that kind of work. You know, the kids used to do that. You know, he's called the snake. He's he doing the snake. And we just got to call him on it. I know some of you love him. We got to call him and hold his feet to the fire. Say, same thing for Kate Bailey Hutch. She did it real before she did <laughs> Real. I got those letters. I'm holding on to them. I have evidence that they are not upholding the Constitution. If they fail to do what they need to do, then we're going to Austin. We're going to Attorney General Abbott. We're going to uh, the Governor, Perry. And we're going to every one of the elected senators and every one of the elected representatives and sending them the same letter with the same 
violations and say to them, we want these laws nullified in the state of Texas. And we want it now. Then we'll say, that's why our founding fathers put the First Amendment there. Because they believe that the power resides with the people. Yes. And we can demand petition redress. We haven't done it. It's time for us to do it. I got people all over this country hearing about, hearing about us and they're responding. Because a lot of people don't know what to do. What do we do with it? They do these things against us. They sit, we sit at home and we get frustrated, we get angry, we turn to our elected officials, they give us the two-step, and then we sit there frustrated. But no, not according to the Constitution. We have a right to petition for redress, and if they don't do what they are supposed to do, the Ninth and Tenth Amendment comes into play. We can nullify it. The Constitution was there and created to limit government, not the people. I'll leave with this quote. And I have some books in the back. I need your help. We're raising $30,000 to buy an ad in the Dallas Morning News and in the uh, Fort Worth Star Telegram. And our, where our due date, our target date is October the 7th or the 11th. To get it in the newspaper. And I'm raising $30,000 to do that. And I've already raised $25,000. People. <laughs> I need 5,000 more, probably 5,000 right here in this room. I got some books in the back that I'm going to, if you write a check for $75 or more, I'll give you a book and a t-shirt, Constitutional Defenders of Texas. Trust me, uh, we are doing this because we believe this is a template for making things different and putting some heat underneath our, our elected officials. If we get a million people sending in petitions from all over this country, we will have the attention of our elected officials. Do you believe that? I yeah, yes. I, and look, I haven't even advertised this thing yet. It hasn't even, and already we have over 500 people using our petition already, sending it to their, their elected officials, just by hearing about it. When we go public, which is on October the 7th, or the 11th, I have, I have got to look at that day again. I believe this thing is going to go by. And you can participate in it. Your participation requires an investment. If you agree with me, and I saw many of you shaking your head like this, that we're facing the same threat that our founding fathers. And what did they do? They gave their lives, their fortune, and their sacred honor. It's time for you to do something. <laughs> I'm glad you say amen. I'm glad you're giving me your hand clap. But I need your money. I need $5,000 more. $5,000 more. And you're investing in the rescue of this nation. Here's what Martin Levin says. I'm going to stop it. He says, the remedy to tyranny is conservatism, precisely because its principles are the founding principles. When I read that two years ago in Liberty and Tyranny, I knew that the man was right on. That our principles, we who are conservative, we're standing on the principles of this great nation. We're standing right where Thomas Jefferson stood. We're standing where Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin stood. We're standing on their shoulder. And, we're, and they are standing on the Bible. Men and women, we have an opportunity here. We have a chance to say something. And no better place than to start the constitutional defenders than in the state of Texas, where we are liberty-loving, freedom-loving people in Texas. And we are the template for the rest of the nation. If we don't stand up, hey! I don't expect any of us in the country to stand up unless we stand up. Will you stand to be judged? Will you stand? Will you stand for America? Will you stand for this republic? Will you stand for the constitutional defense of Texas? God bless you. God bless you. We have uh, just two quick things, and actually three.